Hey everyone, this is Tommy from AI and Games, and you might have caught my recent video that certainly sounded like me, but something wasn't quite right. It was definitely my voice, and on the surface, it sounded a lot like what you would expect of an episode of AI and Games, but the longer it went on, I was just talking nonsense really. If you haven't watched it, the link is in the description and on screen now, go check it out. So, you see, I decided for this 69th episode of AI and Games, we'd get a little bit meta. Nice. The video I produced was recorded and edited by me, as per usual, but the script was written by an AI system. In fact, the script was written by an AI that was trained to write episodes of AI and Games, given it sat and read every script from every episode I've made, and then when I gave it some inspiration, it would write new text for me as if it was me at the keyboard. Now look, this technology isn't new, and a whole bunch of other people have already jumped on the bandwagon for training AI to write everything from YouTube videos to song lyrics, poems and news stories, but I wanted to do this for a number of reasons. First, it's an excuse to talk about AI for text generation, and how it can and is being used in game development. Secondly, to show not only how I did it, but subsequently make it really easy for you to try this yourself. And lastly, to show that despite it being relatively easy to do so, the resulting output was terrible, and it really highlights the current limitations of the technology, lest of course, you're a billionaire. One benefit for me personally was by working on this approach, it got me thinking a lot more about how my videos are made, and so this episode is going to be increasingly more meta, given I'm not just going to explain how these text-generating AI systems work, but in order to make the fake video, we have to talk a little bit about how I make a regular episode and what has changed over the years. Now I'm going to discuss this in length at the end of the video, but I wanted to highlight now that all of the code I used to train an AI to write that episode is available for you to try yourself, and I've linked to it all in the description. So after watching this video, you can try your hand at this yourself and create your own weird and wonderful AI in Games video scripts. Now, before I explain what I did, let's just say from the outset, I expected that the script generated for that video would be terrible for a number of reasons that will hopefully be evident by the end of the video. In fact, it was worse than the version you heard, and I'll explain why in a bit. But ultimately, I felt it was an interesting experiment to conduct nonetheless. Given the ongoing discussion around AI text generation, I wanted to show what you can achieve with not a lot of effort even when running on just a laptop. So let's take a moment to explain what I actually did. Long story short, I trained what is known as a large language model or LLM that could then write text that, on first glance, looks like I could have written it. Specifically, I trained a version of the second generation Generative Pre-trained Transformer or GPT-2, first released by OpenAI back in 2019. These are reasonably powerful language models for the purposes of writing text, translating it, or even answering questions on particular topics. It's able to do this because it's fed a large amount of existing text data to learn from, after which it can then write based on that knowledge. And for the purposes of my own video, what I did was retrain an existing GPT-2 model to learn to write a little more like I do when I create YouTube videos. To do that, I fed it a raw text file of all the video scripts of AI and games, and this effectively injects a lot of Tommy-like inflections in the system's output. But hey, I'm already going too deep into this. Let's wind it back and talk a little bit about language models before I dig a little deeper into how it works. A language model is an idea that emerged from a specific area of computing focused on what we call computational linguistics, which is a very fancy way of saying having computers understand language that is written and spoken by humans. It's a field of research that's existed since the 1970s and has led to a bunch of work by researchers in computer science, artificial intelligence, cognitive sciences, mathematics, psycholinguistics, and much more. A language model is in essence, a probability distribution over a collection of words. What are the odds you say a specific word in a particular type of document? But also, what are the odds that specific words come together in a sentence? If we look at a large body of writing over time, written by thousands of different people, we can begin to identify the probability of whether one particular word would follow another when writing in a particular style and for a given language. A simple yet common example of a language model is predictive text on your phone. When typing out a message, you'll often see words that appear at the top that are recommended to you, 
or depending on your settings it will autocorrect it. These are in essence very simple language models that rely on a dictionary to help with spelling the word you're typing out, but also assist them to predict future word pairings. Some will even begin to learn that you frequently use certain words after others and start suggesting them as well. None of these are particularly intelligent, but it is an example of how these things might work out. Language models can then extend to much more complicated understanding, given all written languages have specific aspects of grammar that need to be factored in. Plus, there is the idea that entire paragraphs are being written to establish a point. Hence, more complex language models start considering how whole sequences of text behave, and even analyze the text both forward and backwards to understand the pre- and post-context of word usage in a given sentence or larger paragraph. One of the big breakthroughs of machine learning and deep learning in recent years is large language models. LLMs are trained using deep neural networks, and not only are they massively complex data structures with a large number of parameters for you to configure, they are capable of processing much larger quantities of text to learn from. GPT-2, the LLM I use in this video, is already out of date and has been surpassed by GPT-3, a system that was trained by reading around 45 terabytes of text data from across the internet. Plus, there are a whole bunch of similar models, such as Roberta from Meta AI and XLNet built in collaboration with Google. However, while all of this is pretty cool, it's important to point out that while a language model learns what words tend to go next to one another in a sentence and then write a sentence that sounds human-like, it doesn't actually understand anything that it writes in that sentence. If you watched the video with the generated script, then you'll know what I'm talking about. Given on multiple occasions, in fact within 10 seconds of the video starting, that script is rambling utter nonsense. The text the language model generates isn't written due to some nuanced understanding of the subject, it's simply putting words together that the internal logic has dictated. As I said already, a language model is a probability distribution of the use of words in a sequence, so it knows those words often go next to each other in a sentence, but it doesn't know what that sentence actually means. What language models lack is what we call a cognitive model, meaning it would actually understand the text it is writing and the point it is trying to make. While the likes of GPT-3 is now achieving significant gains in intelligent text generation, it still doesn't know what it actually says. Sure, the spelling and grammar are immaculate, but quite often the actual meaning of it all is just nonsensical gibberish. Ok, tech background is out the way, let's start talking about how my scriptwriter works. In order to generate the output that I wanted, or at least something that seemed more like my writing style, it was important that the text model I trained is based on my own input to some extent. The language models that you can play with built in GPT-2 and 3 are pre-trained, meaning they've already spent hundreds of hours processing terabytes of text and can start writing with ease. But the problem is, it doesn't sound like me. It wouldn't use the same style of writing as I do. So to pull this off, I used AI TextGen, a Python library developed by Max Wolf and hosted on their GitHub. AI TextGen runs on GPT-2 and gives me the ability to not just train my own language model, but customize an existing pre-trained model to adapt to a specific writing style. And that's how I created a script generator that sounds like it's trying to mimic me. Naturally, you might then be wondering why am I only using GPT-2? Well, the issue is data storage and cost. Training your own version of GPT-3 is now impossible due to the size and cost. I don't have the storage space to keep the model itself, which is around 350 gigabytes. plus I would need a dozen or more GPUs to train it and pay a chunk of money to host GPUs in the cloud for said training, probably to the tune of tens of millions of dollars. I don't know if you've heard, but there's a cost of living crisis going on around here in the UK. I gotta spend my money more wisely. Using AI TextGen, however, I could train a GPT-2 model in a couple of hours, using a CPU on my machine, or using a GPU in the cloud. And I only needed around 100 gigabytes or so to store the final model. But also, why do I need to retrain an existing model to suit? Like I said, it's important that we get the language model to sound like me because I write my episodes in a very specific way, but I also need it to know how to just write text normally. If the system simply knows how to write text, it won't catch on that I'm trying to write, for example, the introduction or the conclusion of a given episode. While I did go ahead and retrain the GPT-2 model, I also wrote the spine of the generated episode by feeding the model prompts to generate from. If you watched the Colonial Marines video, you might have noticed that periodically there was the odd sentence or paragraph that made perfect sense, and it was often the starting point for a larger chunk of discussion. 
Those were written by me, and what I was doing was providing them so that the model had some text to start from. It would read the text I provide, and then generate the new text to follow on from it. In order to do that, I used a particular type of language model. It wasn't just the vanilla version of GPT-2, but rather a specific version called GPT-2neo. The neo version of these language models is perfect for this purpose, given it as an example of what is called an autoregressive language model, a type of model built specifically for generating text against a prompt. So that means I will give it some text, and then expect it to write more after that point. As I'll discuss in a minute, I often provided the prompts, and then sometimes I actually used the output the AI generated previously as the prompt for the next segment. But as I mentioned already, I can't just use the pre-trained model if I want it to write an episode of AI in games. Even if I give it prompts based on how I write, it's not going to follow that style lest we retrain it, and that's why I went through this process. So for example, you might have noticed I always open a video with a segment where I introduce myself and the channel, before I describe what the episode is about. This is a strict rule I have, given every video is someone's first, so I want it to be accommodating to new viewers. But if you feed that prompt into a pre-trained GPT-2 model without editing it to suit me, it kinda says whatever it wants. I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games, and in this episode I am presenting the first ever Game of Thrones episode. I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games, and in this episode we're talking about our first game. The first game that's been released on PlayStation 4 with a lot of fan feedback. I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games, and in this episode I hope to talk about the future of virtual reality and the way in which we are going to create it. So yeah, some of that made sense, some of it didn't, but none of it sounded like something I would actually write. So the trick is to do two things. We're going to use the prompts based on how I typically write and structure my videos, but also I need to build one of these models that is based to some extent on my actual writing. And here's the next step that kicks in. I then retrain GPT-2neo by letting it read a whole bunch of my episode scripts. In order to prepare the training, I had to prepare the text that the system would learn from. Fortunately, I actually write fully-fledged scripts for each episode of AI and Games. Fun fact, I actually tried to record my earliest videos in a more natural and dynamic way, much like how I used to teach university lectures, and I learned quickly that simply does not work. So since around episode 4 on the Mario AI competition, I've written some form of script to support my writing, and nowadays I write these scripts exactly how I plan to record them. Fortunately, I keep every script file I've ever written, and it meant I now had my training set. I could get the system to write like me by reading all of my episode scripts and then take it from there. But this requires some cleanup. A lot of my scripts have production notes in them that are put in there as I write. Perhaps I have a particular piece of footage in mind for the segment, or a particular piece of music should play at this point. Maybe even a diagram is going to be needed to visualise something as I go. In my more recent episodes, that isn't a problem. I've learned to internalise that process a little more and trust my own instincts. However, long-time viewers will have noticed the episodes are written in chapters, with distinct segments covering particular topics. This is something I do on purpose, given I like to break up the material I'm delivering and try to ease you into new topics so that you feel like you're learning as you watch the video. This has led more recently to my adopting the chapter feature on YouTube quite readily, given I already write like that. But for this project, it also meant I had to remove those chapter headers from the text of every script. There was also some other things, like the names of developers mentioned in a given video, or patrons who have received shoutouts. Heck, I tend to leave a lot of spelling mistakes in there because I just write my episodes in simple text files, often because I work on the same script file on different devices over a period of time. Plus, in some videos there are quotes from other people, or in the case of things like the Sea of Thieves episodes, actual interview clips which I annotated for the subtitles. While those are important to those episodes, they're not a reflection of my writing, so we cut them out. And then really just any other esoteric elements got the chop. But ultimately, once we cleaned all this up, this became my training set. A whole lot of words that I have previously typed out to record for previous videos. Sadly though, Looking back, even some of the early scripts didn't encapsulate the complete spoken dialogue of that video. There were often still too many ad-libs that weren't captured in the text, so I cut out any script that didn't cover the whole episode completely in its entirety. So the language model was trained from every complete script of every episode of the main AI and game series, of which I had 54 to work with. 
This included every script starting with episode 14, detailing the AI of Transformers Fall of Cybertron, a video I released in 2016, and still one of my favourite episodes, might I add, all the way through to the 68th episode on Gran Turismo Sophie that I released earlier this year, an episode that is not one of my favourites because hardly anyone watched it, meaning I played a whole lot of Gran Turismo 7 for nothing. You'll note that I didn't include the scripts from the AI 101 or Design Dive series, but that was largely because the language and tone of those videos changes slightly, and I just wanted to focus on creating a language model that writes based on the main video series. After training the model against these episode scripts, the resulting output does sound a little better, or at least is actually stealing from previous videos I've made. I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games, and in this episode we're going to explore the AI that build the companion AI of the Shangri-La sequence of Far Cry 4. I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games, and in this episode we're going to look at a pure stealth game that makes the hacking process relevant to the core gameplay systems. I'm Tommy Thompson, this is AI in Games, and in this episode we're going to look at a pure stealth game that makes the hacking process relevant to the player. Okay, so it's beginning to sound a little more like me, but it's not quite there. In fact, it's often repeating the same stock phrases, and some of it is being lifted verbatim from actual episode scripts. The sentence about the Shangri-La sequence of Far Cry 4 isn't from episode 16, the actual video about Far Cry 4. It's actually taken from episode 32, which is on the companion AI in Far Cry Primal, and this speaks to what is ultimately the flaw of the system. Now, you might think I didn't train the model correctly, and in fact, when you train a model like this, you set the number of iterations to train on in order for it to update itself and improve its knowledge. Now, I ran it for tens of thousands of iterations and trained the model multiple times with different permutations. But at this point, it would do more harm than good. One of the issues with my script generator is it simply doesn't have enough data to learn from. Sure, I have now made close to 70 episodes of this blasted YouTube series, but even then, that doesn't amount to a whole lot of writing. In fact, the training set of 54 episodes is only 170,000 words, and that's only a couple of hundred pages worth of text. It's arguably the length of a single book. Speaking of, who here would fund an actual book of essays based on all these episodes? I would seriously launch a Kickstarter on this if you wanted it. But anyway, when training a language model like this, that's simply not enough of my writing to successfully retrain the system, given it doesn't have enough data to learn from to build a more comprehensive idea of how I should write. As a result, it begins to overfit, and in many cases the options for different things it can say in a given sentence are quite limited. Hence, it will often write something that is either copying a line from an existing episode verbatim, or it's cobbled together from multiple videos at once. There's simply not enough for it to use. For comparison's sake, The Complete Works of Shakespeare is just over 850,000 words. You're more likely at this point to get a bot that writes half-decent Shakespeare than one that can write an episode of AI in games. Oh, and for reference, GPT-3 was trained on somewhere in the region of 1 trillion words, and that cost around $12 million to do so. So yeah, I don't think we're going to compete anytime soon. The other unspoken element here is that I write in a highly technical way, but also I spend a lot of my time trying to explain things in a way that is accessible, hence the resulting output is going to be this weird mishmash of plain English and technical terms that seldom makes any bloody sense. And of course, as discussed already, a language model is not a cognitive model, so you'll have noticed in the Colonial Marines video, the output generated uses a lot of technical terms, but it doesn't understand what any of that means. That makes the prospect of getting output from this model that makes sense all the more limited. In fact, I'd argue right now, it sounds a lot more like some random dude bro on the internet trying to sound like he's smart and failing spectacularly once his statements are placed under even a tiny bit of scrutiny. I'm waiting for some sarcastic comments below after that one. Would this perform better if I splurged the money and tried to run it on GPT-3? Perhaps. I mean, training a GPT-3 from scratch is impossible, given that would cost me millions of dollars. Even retraining would no doubt cost me a pretty penny. Still, I suspect the issue would still come down to the amount of text it's learning from. But hey, debates on improvements aside, I trained me a model, and that was the best I had to work with. So now the trick was to write a video with it. As mentioned already, I am prone to writing in chapters, and also I have a habit of writing in a particular way. In fact, I typically write a video with the following layout. An introduction that sets the scene, explains the topic, introduces me by name, and then highlights what we're going to talk about. A technical background chapter or two, where I explain the game, the problem, or the core tech I'm going to talk about. A methodology chapter on how it works and how it comes together, again, there might be several of these, 
a discussion of the performance of the output, or weird design concessions and other aspects that are interesting to explain to the audience. And then a conclusion where I wrap it all up, thank you for watching, and of course, a shout out to my crowdfunding fans and a plug for the Patreon. So to make the episode work, I created prompts that would be as if I was starting a particular chapter of the video. If you've watched the Colonial Marines video, you'll notice it's written in four chapters, because I figured I wanted it to feel like a full-length video, but also I didn't want it to be too long. Your average AI in games episode nowadays runs at around 20 minutes, but given this thing is talking straight up bullshit most of the time, I figured let's keep it to 10 minutes max. So I hand wrote several of the prompts, and then let the AI write a good paragraph or two afterwards. Meanwhile, in a couple of instances, the system actually came up with some good lines of dialogue, and so I would grab the closing sentence of that paragraph and then feed it into the generator for the next batch of text to be created. And from that, we had a complete script, and then the next challenge was actually recording it. Certainly one of the biggest challenges for me personally was trying to read some of the script and make it sound right. And this is of course two challenges in one, reading out what is written and giving it a cadence that I have to figure out after the fact. I actually write episodes by speaking them aloud as I type, so I know that what is written will roll nicely off my tongue. And this is another challenge for me, given it's got to work in my YouTube voice. The voice you hear on YouTube, this one right here, isn't what I sound like in real life. It's more of a cleaned up facsimile of my voice that sounds better in videos than my regular Scottish twang. A combination of clearer enunciation and a bit of post-processing in the video editor. Truth be told, I get a lot of flack for my YouTube voice from my Scottish friends back home, and most of it is deserved, to be honest. But there you have it. With that, the voice tracks went down, and then I edited the whole thing together, like it was any other episode of AI in Games. It was just much harder than usual to pull off. So being the professional idiot that I am, I wasted a few days cooking up this whole experiment. But what does this prove? Is any of this even relevant to the games industry? Are language models going to be remotely useful for developers down the line? Well, the truth is that language models are already being used quite extensively in some corners of the industry, while there are other emerging breakthroughs kicking off in this space that we will see more of in the coming years. The most pervasive and obvious aspect is the one that most players won't think of, and that's in data analytics for AAA publishers. There's a lot of ground here to cover in a future video, but one practical area for language models that generate text is in localization. Machine translation, as it is known, is the process of using AI to translate from one language to another. This can either be for text, or using speech-to-text translation too, meaning you might get this spoken dialogue by a character, or even in voice chat, and then translate that into another language for a user to understand. Given the ever-increasing market of written or spoken dialogue in games, and of course online gaming, plus the number of different markets being targeted, this is seen as a mechanism to help bootstrap that process. Naturally, you can't remove the human element from this entirely, and you need people to validate and often rewrite text that doesn't translate across correctly, given all sorts of cultural nuances, though you can bet some publishers will no doubt try anyway. Though arguably the one application that many of you will know is AI Dungeon, the text adventure game generator. First released back in 2019 for browsers by Nick Walton, the system could generate stories based on user input inspired by classic Dungeons & Dragons, and was powered by an early version of GPT-2. The team has since expanded, with spin-out company Latitude handling the ongoing development of AI Dungeon 2 being powered by GPT-3. The system has gone from strength to strength in recent years, not just improving the storytelling capabilities, but adding a multiplayer component and improving the user experience to go beyond a somewhat hacky demo to a fully-fledged game players can properly enjoy. The earlier versions also struggled because hosting the model for users to play with and the ongoing development of the model cost a lot of money. But in 2022, an updated version of the game came to Steam, and this utilises a new API for GPT-3 that means that, unlike the earlier versions, you don't need to maintain a local copy of GPT-3 in order to run the game properly, and streamlines the data storage requirements drastically. There are now different text models running in AI Dungeon, ranging in complexity of output and capabilities, but also intrinsically tied to the purchase model too. More money you throw at it, the bigger the model you get to play with. So this has been an interesting learning experience for me. I still have a lot to learn, and I'm continuing to play with this system and learn a bit more about training my own language models in my spare time. But, given the focus of the episode, I wanted this to be a project where you could get something out of all of this nonsense too. 
So as I wrote the script, I also prepared a four-part tutorial that shows you how to build an entire GPT-2 model from scratch and also how to retrain an existing GPT-2 Neo model in the same way that I did. This tutorial is now freely available online and the links are in the description. Full disclosure, this tutorial borrows heavily from Max Wolf's existing AI text gen tutorials, given they were really great. I focused on writing out the whole process in a way that is as friendly and accessible as possible, so even if you don't know how to program, you can follow the steps and effectively generate text all by yourself. The tutorial is hosted up on Google Colab, which is an online environment for running Python scripts for machine learning algorithms and other data science projects. You can follow the instructions to copy over the Colab notebooks to your own Google Drive and then try it out yourself. I hope you find it interesting and maybe even do a better job of it than I did. Thanks for watching this especially weird episode of AI and Games. I wanted to do something particularly dumb for the 69th episode, and when this came to mind, I had a lot of fun playing around with training text models. I'm keen to come back to this at some point, as I'm also experimenting with other AI tools to see how well they would work in replacing me as part of the video production process. The truth is, I'm just lazy and would rather get an AI to do all the work, so I don't have to. Plus, I'm working on some other weird and wonderful AI projects related to the YouTube channel. I think I'll have some more to share with you in 2023 for sure. I was actually working on something else entirely before this idea cropped up. Don't worry, we'll get back to it shortly. In the meantime, we're resuming normal programming with episode 70, which is just around the corner. For now, don't forget to like, subscribe, and support on Patreon if you want to watch the live recordings I made as I tried to put down the voice tracks of the Colonial Marines episode. Oh god, I'm in tears on multiple occasions. Take care of yourselves, and I'll be back.